Hello everybody, welcome to Artist Waves Live. My name is Jeff Gora. Today is Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. This is episode 33. And this is a really special one. Why? Why am I saying the date? And that is because we're all about PJ today. Uh, 30 years ago today, Pearl Jam played their very first show, Seattle, Washington, the off-ramp. So check this out, imagine this. You're a new band, you're a relatively new band. Uh, some people in your band are somewhat unknown. You got Stone Gossard, you got Jeff Ament from Mother Love Bone. You got Chris Cornell, you got the rest of Soundgarden, you got Nancy Wilson from Heart, you got Randy Johnson from the Seattle Mariners, and there's probably a long list of others that are in the audience at the off-ramp witnessing we're, we're waiting for your first concert. You step on stage and the expectations are both wildly high and wildly unknown. Who is this group? Who are they gonna be? Who's this new singer from San Diego? We got Dave Cruzen on the drums. And you open up kind of against the grain slowly, quietly. And your first song that you play is an original song and it's release. I mean, come on now. Your first song is release, and that is an original song. Obviously released from their classic debut record 10, that still to this day is one of the most moving songs of all time, one of the best show openers of all time. And there you have it, the rest is history. October 22nd, 1990, the band was called Mookie Blaylock. Obviously that, that name did not stick. Uh, because, in part because there was someone who already had it. It was a guy named Wookie Blaylock. <laughs> who knows what that's from. Uh, anyway, so hello to everyone who joined. So I gave you a little intro on, on the uh, little history lesson on, on PJ 101 and why today is such a special and important day. And with that, I'm really excited to, uh, to tell you about our guest who will be joining me momentarily from Seattle. You may have seen some of these. It's brilliant. <laughs> right on. Um, you may have seen some of the classic photos from that night in 1990 from the off-ramp Pearl Jam's first show. Uh, in fact, Pearl Jam just posted one on their socials like 10 minutes ago um, from that night, from that first show 30 years ago. That photograph and all the photographs that I've seen of that night were by a, an infamous Seattle rock photographer, uh, especially from the 90s. Her name is Karen Mason Blair. She will be joining me live here um, on Artist Waves Live to talk about that night, what it was like to photograph Pearl Jam's first show, a little bit of her history in photographing uh, some of the most epic Seattle shows of all times. Also, the, photo the photographer who has taken some really classic Cornell shots, Alice in Chains, um, Kurt Cobain, she's got a few books out, and we're gonna learn a little bit about Karen's background. We're gonna learn a little bit about what she has going on and what she has coming up and about some of her books. And we're just gonna talk. We're just gonna talk Seattle. We're gonna talk Seattle music. We're gonna talk this day in history. Um, I don't know, one of the questions I've always wondered is all the photos I've seen from that first show, the off-ramp, um, they all have her name attached to it. So I'm very curious as to whether or not she was really the only approved or journalist photographer that was at that show. Um, Maybe there were others and they, they just aren't as good or they fell by the wayside or whatever, but all of the classic shots from that night are by Karen. So um, we're gonna get some stories behind it. She may show a few photos and we are going to, uh, we're just gonna chat. We'll see where it goes. We'll, we'll have fun. Um, maybe we'll take some questions. I think Karen might show a few photos and tell some stories behind it. This came together rather quickly and I'm so happy it did because I'm really excited. I wanted to do something really badly uh, today about the anniversary, about 30 years ago today, Mookie Blaylock at the off-ramp. <clears throat> and we do have an article on artistways.com today that also pays tribute to today. And it's uh, it's in part a, uh, let's I guess you could call it something that is 
taking excerpts from the book PJ20 that you remember the, the film Cameron Crowe's film PJ20 along with that there was a book that I believe uh, Cameron wrote the forward to but there were some excerpts from that book about today and the, the lead up to that point so um, check it out artistways.com I think Karen Mason Blair is here and I'm going to request she joins us live enough of me let's start talking about uh, 1990 Seattle Pearl Jam that night and the great photography of Karen Mason Blair. Excuse my reach here. This is how you do it on Instagram, so I have to reach. Hello, Karen. Hey, hi. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. I totally owe you an apology, <laughs> making you wait for so long. And I'm just, you know, so thankful that you, you know, help artists. You know, I just, I appreciate that, especially now. We oh, right on. <laughs> uh, thank you for saying that. No, I'm so happy that uh, it was, it was worth the wait because this timed perfectly. I think today's opportunity and, and the, uh, the anniversary and all of your classic shots, it, this worked out really well. So um, thanks for being so responsive. Yeah, I like your shirt. <laughs> it's all about PJ today. It's a, it's you know a, it's it a, or, or Mookie Blaylock, I should say. Totally. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Unbelievable. I um I was I was telling a little history about it before you, before you came on, and one thing that I can't ever wrap my head around is first of all who was in the audience. We can get to that, but um, imagine like you're a brand new band and the, and those people are there and the first people the first song that you play is an original like release i mean i'm getting goosebumps just explaining it <laughs> it was crazy it really was i mean you know well and especially that you loved all the songs that's what was just so fantastic of the evening i mean yeah. it's, it's so like i mean i still hear like I was reading an article, they said, oh, you know, Nancy Wilson was there. And I was like, I don't remember seeing her, but I'm sure she was, you know? <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't a very big crowd, actually, you know? Yeah, I think I had read like upwards of 100, 150 people, which is, makes it all that more special. Um, but I wanted to ask you, I'm curious, uh, before we get to that show, that day, that night, a little bit about your history and basically how you got there that night were... Um, how did you get into photography in the first place and how did you get into music and, and shooting live shows and rock shows? Was that something you always had a passion for or something you fell into? Like, oh, I'm curious your background. Well, yeah, my, th my story is, is that um, it was in high school and I had a boyfriend who played in a band and they needed some band photos. And, I, and so we had all these photographers were so expensive. And I was like, you guys, I'll just go buy a camera. Well, I'll just take your photos. And so I, I took the photos and then they're like, these are really good. And I was like, oh, you guys are just saying that. <laughs> and then and then I started looking around. I was like, yeah, maybe these are really good. And then um, and then later I just, you know, I ended up getting my commercial photography degree. And then I moved to um, California, I moved to Hollywood and I had a studio in Hollywood. And I was down there like when, you know, Guns N' Roses was exploding and, you know, they were all my friends and, you know, hung out with them and, and the eighties were alive and well. And I was even in California when uh, Mother Lovebone, they were uh, driving around in the limo and they're like, Karen, Karen, come out with us. We just got signed to Polygram. I was like, right on. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And then I, and then I moved back to Seattle and then all the grunge bands, you know, the whole grunge thing takes off right when I moved back. And because I lived in LA, then I had all these LA connections. And they didn't know any Seattle photographers, you know, this is well before the internet and <laughs> all of that. And so then, so then I just, I, they just started calling me Karen and then all my friends, you know, um, the whole grunge thing is like, all those bands are my friends. And so they're like, Karen, take my pictures, Karen, take our photos, Karen. And I'm just like, click, 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 and, you know, and then it just goes from there, you know. Wow, that's awesome. I love I love that a story like that, how it just kind of happened. It, you're like your passion found you sort of um, sort of thing. That's so cool. So when are we like how many years into it are you by the time we reached 1990 and, and Pearl Jam's debut? And had you been do, like, was it your official career at that point? Yeah, it was because like I said, I went to college, and I got my commercial photography degree, and then I moved to Hollywood. I was like, I'm going to be a celebrity photographer, you know, so I moved down there. And then 
LA wasn't really my jam. So then I come back and then it's just like, oh, the reason why I moved is because you couldn't be a, you know, an entertainment photographer in Seattle. <laughs> you had to either move to LA or New York. So I was like, well, then I'm moving to LA. And then I was like, what? I can be an entertainment photographer in Seattle. This is fantastic. And so, yeah, so then I moved back right at the time. And like I said, those are connections were already established and it just made it so much easier. That's cool. I, I've always been fascinated by the tight knit community that was, or probably still is Seattle, especially in, in the nineties and how, like supportive they were of each other. And like you said, how the, the groups would call you, the artists would call you for their for their shoots and stuff. It, it just, like that type of camaraderie, it just seems so special just from the outside looking in. Oh, it, yeah. And I mean, it, it's, I mean, we want to say Seattle's still like that, but it's not in many ways. But, but I always say the grunge movement was like 300 to 500 people. That it it wasn't this massive thing and it was like there was the one you know two guys that do t-shirts two guys that do posters you know go call karen to get your photos get your management over here you know and it was this this one little group and everyone just cycled through it and then you know it's like one one week allison chains will be on stage and i'm standing next to jeff amet next week jeff amet's on stage i'm standing next to jerry cantrell you know and, yeah. and that was it is they had to come out to support their bands and then vice versa and that's how we started a movement is we just all stuck to, stuck together and and well made a difference you know i mean we worked really hard <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure and it yeah. seemed like work that you welcomed and that you all had a had a love for each other um and probably still do you know, one thing too I'm curious is, um, I love working with photographers, with artists, with artists. One of the things that we've always done is, um, especially with special features, to try and connect with a photographer who's either local or was some sort of, had some sort of emotional attachment to the subject matter. Uh -huh. So that it adds a little bit more life to, to the piece and gives a little bit more meaning behind it and makes it kind of like multi-dimensional. Um, as opposed to just nothing against a press kit or whatever, but the photos that they have in there, which are always great. There's often other stories that accompany what we're talking about. So I, I've always had such, a, such an admiration for music photography and the type of work that goes behind it. Um, but one of the things when I look back and think back to like the 90s or early 90s or grunge or whatever, is that it seemed like and I know the lay of the land and the dynamic of venues and stuff was different, but it seems like a lot of the photography were more like portrait still sessions or press shots as opposed to live photography of the shows. Was that, a, is, was that the case? Like, was it harder to shoot live shows then than it was to just, you know, to, to like press shots or something like that? Well, you have to understand that when, when uh, you know, the grunge movement started is that, <clears throat> It basically started because uh, touring bands wouldn't stop in Seattle because they drive from New York and they'd go to LA and they'd have to come, they'd have to go all the way through Oregon because there was nowhere to play. So they'd come up to Seattle. And so a lot of them didn't. So then we, so as a community, we were like, we need live music because we love live music. So that's really what, you know, uh, you know, blossomed the whole grunge thing to start in the first place. So uh, the thing is, is that <laughs> these clubs didn't have any light shows. They were terrible. Uh, and I think you guys have to invest in some lights. Like, I can't, I can't get a picture. And of course, we're all filmed, you know. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And eventually they got their lights, you know, because then they started making money because we'd go out. And then they're like, well, now we can justify upgrading the sound system and the lighting show. And so, so and, and you know, we're all shooting film. And there's no, uh, you know. I mean, we're broke, you know, <laughs> we're starving artists. Like, I mean, to tell you the truth, I shot one roll of film at the Pearl Jam for a show. That was it, one roll, 36 images, done. Because that, that was it, I don't know, it's so crazy. <laughs> That's amazing, it's, it's fascinating. I, I, it, it seems obvious that I wouldn't necessarily think of that, like the, the, the structure of the venue and how supportive they were physically to being able to accommodate photos. You gotta remember probably obviously the technology behind cameras and stuff then too um but so moving ahead to that night what was your build up and your preparation and expectation for october 22nd 1990 seeing mookie blaylock at off ramp obviously you knew some of the guys you knew their history but did you have any sort of like expectation as to what what was going to happen what you were going to be photographing 
Well, it, three days before, Jeff and Matt called me, because, you know, this is when everyone has to call everybody on the phone, right? And he's like, Karen, you got to come check out my new band. And I was like, great. And so three days later, I show up to the off-ramp. And like I said, I brought my camera. And I, I guess, I mean, it ends up that I'm the only photographer, which I, I okay. in my entire history, I've never I was wondering seen. about that. Yeah, which was mind blowing. Now, only now do I even know this. And so, um, and all, and you know, and you get there, and it's kind of like um, the crazy thing is, is that we all loved Andrew Wood. You know, there's no getting around it. We, we were the whole, you know, city was a buzz with Mother Love Bone. I mean, and they have like a very love infection thing, you know, infectious thing. I mean, like, how can you not love Mother Love Bone? Because they're just so happy. And so. Um, so we, you know, we show up and it's just kind of like, uh, there's a little, everyone's still a little somber, you know what I mean? Because Andrew yeah. only died like six months, it's been, maybe even seven months since Andrew died. And so we're still kind of sad, you know, because, and we love the Apple album, hands down, right? And, you know, I, maybe they had done the record release party for Apple. I don't even know if they released Apple. I'm not a historian, but um, so we're sitting there and we're like, oh my gosh. And, and all, I can, all I can think, and I'm just going to be totally honest is all I can think of is, oh, please, dear God, let me like this singer. Because you know, you know, I go up to Jeff and Stoney and go, hey, man, <laughs> don't really like this guy, you know? And it's like, oh, my God, because we're already, everything's just so crazy. And, uh, and, you know, so here, you know, here they come out on stage, and it's just like, oh, my gosh, the minute Eddie starts singing, your heart just goes, yes, like, Oh, we are so happy. And and the guy totally sings from his heart, you know. Oh, and, yeah. and he till this day. But you you could feel his his you know, his passion, even on that first concert, you know. And so then, you know, and so then you're just so happy and then and then your mind's just blown. Like you're just like, What in the world? <laughs> what on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're just rocking out. I mean, everyone's just rocking out because the, the songs have such swagger, you know. So sometimes when you hear a song for the first time, you're just kind of like, OK, you know, and it might grow on you or warm on you. Not the case with this. You know, you're just like, wow. Uh -huh. And from where I was standing, it, there wasn't very many people. You know, that's why I think there wasn't very many people, because I got right up there and I got whole band shots. And normally I can't get whole band shots because there's too many people, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's amazing. So had you had known about this new group before? Like, was there a buzz about it? Or when Jeff called you to shoot that night, were you like, oh, cool. I, I didn't know you guys were playing. Yeah, I don't think I, you know, I, I had heard rumors that, um, you know, that m maybe, oh, I know what, because I had several friends that sent audition tapes in. <laughs> and, you know, oh, I want to be Pearl Jam. Oh, you know, they didn't, they weren't even called Pearl Jam. You know, I, I called them in so much so that in my files, I called it new love because I, you know, I was like, Mookie Blit. I'm like, that's not going to be their name. Like I knew it. So I just called them new love in, in my files. But, um, but so anyways, rumor had it that they had found somebody. We didn't know it was Eddie and I didn't meet Eddie until after the show. So, you know, it's, it was just wow, you know, and, and it, it, I think it came together pretty quickly. I mean, from the time they met, like they kept sending yeah. tapes back and forth, but then by the time they met, I think they only practiced I don't know what is it three times and then and then got up there and rocked out yeah that's yeah. it's amazing it really is such a, an incredible story and i was wondering too i was talking a little bit in an in intro about one of the questions i have uh, first of all we're also lucky that someone like you was there to capture it and capture it so beautifully oh. like you did because it's such a special night and how the how the photos and the images and the emotions transpire and resonate so deeply 30 years later um, it's pretty unique for, you know, for a show from 1990 for that to happen. So uh, I, I would say that I would pause for a second and say we're all, we are all very lucky that uh, someone like you was there to, especially those that, um, you know, that the group and the music and stuff has been such a, an influential part of our lives. Uh, oh. But I was wondering that in the intro, I was wondering, like, were you the only official press photographer there? Um, because all of the history I see behind that night was, has your name attached to it. In fact, 10 minutes before we got on here, the band themselves posted that photo of yours on all their socials. I can't even keep up. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> I, I love them. They're so good to me. Wow, that's cool. That made my yeah. So you were the only photographer there that night. 
Yeah, well, I guess I, I did read a story that, you know, Lance Mercer was there, but he didn't bring his camera. That's what I heard. Oh, and man. Then, and then Charles, you know, uh, Charles Peterson, he kind of ran on a little bit of a different circuit than, than I did. So, I mean, I didn't see I didn't see Charles as much at, at my show, the shows that I went to. He kind of went a little different. But, I mean, so, yeah, who knew? It's like I, I was, um, I went to the premiere of uh, Pearl Jam uh, 20, the, you know, the movie, right? And so, um, and so there's, a, there's this, you know, shot in the movie and Eddie Vedder's standing in this hallway and he's like, here's a picture of my, of my third concert. And I, I was like, third concert? I'm like, what the hell? -o? And so then, so then I, I, I called Kelly and I was like, Kelly, I got pictures from the first show. He's like, what? He goes, you're the only. I go, what? Like, I knew I had the photos. I didn't <laughs> really the only photographer. And he ended up buying them for the band and gave them to the band for Christmas, you know. He bought them all a giant, you know, 16 by 20 is framed and, and he gave them to the band. So now they all have <laughs> the first show. But it took me that long. It took me 20 something years to even go, oh, you guys want to look at these? Wow, that's a really cool story. A little behind the scenes uh, info <laughs> that you wouldn't have thought of. And, so when you were shooting that night, were they for anything specifically, any like publication or, or news about the show or it was just for your own, your own files, your own doing? Yeah, it was just, yeah. I think it was just like, I had taken, I was gonna show you, I'd taken these mother love bone pictures. Uh, can you see this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I had done the mother love bone um, promo session and uh in march for the you know for the album uh, apple and then so uh you know that andrew dies and so uh, so i have the last mother love bone pictures and the first pro jam pictures so then I, I i went like as an homage you know what i mean like i'm gonna go take pictures of jeff's new band jeff and stoney's new band you know and so that that's what i did i mean i don't know it's so i i love it when people like you ask me what were you thinking 30 years <laughs> I was in my 20s. Okay, I'm going to try to tell you what I remember, but <laughs> might have had a beer or two. I don't know. <laughs> awesome. so funny. Yeah. So that I, I just knew that I wanted to take some shots. And I think I, you know, probably, I was probably planning on taking a half a roll. And I ended up shooting a whole roll because I loved them so much. Because <laughs> I used to just take half rolls because that's all you could afford. Man, it was crazy. It's so cool. It's so cool. And, and the, um, I was looking at a lot of the photos you sent me. Some of them I hadn't seen before. Yeah, I just brought them out. Oh, really? Uh -huh. There's one in particular of, of Mike where he, he just looks like, it's just classic Mike shredding doing, in his zone doing his thing. Yeah. And then there's one of, so there's, I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know how this happened. This there, one? Yes, that's it. That's I, just, I gave this to Mike last, uh, last summer. Yeah, look how happy he looks. It, it's just like, that just says it all. In, in the book, um, that accompanied the film. He said, there's a line in that book where he said, he's quoted saying, I could tell that night my dreams were coming true. And like, if I could put a picture to that line, it would be that picture. Oh. It just, it just nails it. Um, and then there's one of, of Eddie. So there's a video. This one here? Yes, that one and the, actually both of them. And both the other, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one where he's singing with his heart. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. So there's a video online on YouTube that has parts of that show that night. Um, I don't know how it surfaced or who put it together, but it is the video and you can see release. There's a video of release and it starts slow and it starts like, all right, it's kind of chill. And then he hits with the like, oh, dear dad line. And then all right. And just the whole thing changes. Right, like it just it just erupts. It emotionally erupts, and like it talks about this singer who sings so emotionally and with such passion. And that's the picture that comes to mind when I think of because for me personally, like I was very into music at that time, always have been. But you know, Guns and Roses, and I still love that stuff. But there was nothing that hit me like wow. There's there's music that could like make you feel things first like there's emotional waves to music and that was my first introduction to that about how it could be a voice and a, an outlet for creativity and just like be this beautiful thing that accompanies your life um so like that part of that song of that delivery is just i think it nails that and I'm, 
I'm, I'm, uh, I'm rambling a little bit about it because it's, it's just so, uh, it's so like profound. And that photo, I think, man, I can't imagine what it was like to, to capture something like that. Oh, I know. And it's like, you know, I mean, of course, back then, I mean, we were all, like I said, we were all just starting out, you know. I mean, it's so funny to me because, uh, like, uh, like I have to, I, you know, I, I show these pictures and it's like, hi, here's like, you know, the 10th band I ever shot. Like, normally, you'd want to show your best pictures. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, I love my pictures, but I mean, you know how you start your career and you just get better every year. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I gotta show everybody my beginning photos. But but yeah, I mean I mean they gave me so much because I mean Eddie just you know he just looked that way and I just took that photo. You know what I mean? It was very symbiotic and and uh, Mike McCready, I went over to Mike Mike's house and he's like, Karen, here's that picture, you know, he's got it all framed and and uh, and he goes, Karen, what was I wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh my gosh, Mike, I said, if the camera would have been turned on me, I'd look just as bad. <laughs> How the hell do I know? I'm like, why are we wearing half that stuff? But it was so funny, you know, so it's like, you know, and the 90s were so different from the 80s, because like the 80s, all the bands wanted their pictures taken and the 90s they did not want their pictures taken so here i am only only you know and i think i think actually me being a uh, you know a woman or a girl actually lended itself to get these photos of the band because because they liked me you know what i mean but they did not like their photos taken you know so i mean believe me like sometimes i'd have my camera you know and it'd just be like mm -mm, like <laughs> no photos backstage or none at the party or whatever you know because they just they weren't into it or i have a lot of these hand you know eh, you know like okay thanks okay but um yeah so it's it was just a different time <laughs> that's really interesting i wouldn't have necessarily thought about that but it's it makes total sense knowing the the um the vibes and like the uh, kind of the mentality. It makes a lot of sense, which probably makes the photos even that much more precious and, and valuable. Uh, I was gonna show, I was gonna, cause we just keep talking about it. Here's my book, The Flannel Year. Yeah. I wanted to show you this Chris Cornell photo. I mean, I, I, I love it. I mean, it just, it's just so, oh, hold on. Yeah, let me look for it here. Sorry. I, I should have marked it. Um, but it's like, I think, I really do think that people like look at this, Chris Cornett. Look at oh. these eyes. I love it. I love that. You know, and then and then I mean, you guys have you guys seen the the Chris Cornell with the Pearl Jam? Wearing this shirt, that's one of my favorite photos of all time. I feel like that there is a photo that encapsulates that whole scene, man, of just you know supporting each other and, and the Godfather right there. Oh yeah, and I and I said because all these you know like so all these bands would come into my studio and I I'd always say you can't wear you know you can't wear local bands shirts because you know Rolling Stone you know they're like who's this band you know and I'm like no you you have one agenda we're promoting Soundgarden or whatever and so I was like Chris you need to take that you gotta take that shirt off and he goes Karen no way this. They're my best friends. He's like, I'm gonna help them out. And I was like, okay, Chris, you can wear it for a couple shots. <laughs> and I let him wear it. I let him wear it. And and so he did. And and now look at how iconic it is. I mean, and that he and he just wasn't having it. He was like, no, I'm gonna wear this. <laughs> that sounds like Chris Cornell to a T. And I love it. He's the totally. he's like nobody else. So um that's cool. Thank you for sharing. I I love stories behind photos like that. So I could listen all day. And I just want to ask you one more thing about that last PJ show, first PJ show, excuse me, yeah. you were just last talking about is from your perspective as a fellow artist, as a Seattle artist, as someone who was so proud and in the scene, what was the, what did you feel after that show? Like either like looking back, I guess it's, it's kind of two part when it was over after you had witnessed that. And then when you went back and saw the photos that you took of that night, what's the reaction to, to that? Well, I'm telling you that the, like, I'm like, that's what I was saying. Like when we walked in, everybody was somber. I don't even know. Um, I don't think Stoney and Jeff, I, I don't even think they even went out much. Like we hadn't seen anybody since the wake, you know, of Andrew. And, um, so it's kind of like, oh, hi, how are you doing? You know, so we have all in, and, and the mood's kind of low, but then totally, I mean, like, I'm telling you, like, 
I could not have been happier. And, and the other thought I thought is, God, I just thought, oh, Lord, this guy, like, I, I wish, I, Eddie, I wish you all the best because those are some big shoes to fill. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, oh, you had an average singer and now you went to a great, you had a great singer and now you went to another great singer. I mean, the chances of that happening are just odd. I mean, anyways, you, yeah. just, you understand that in the music business. And then, so then everyone's just like, I mean, just like the song says, we're, we're feeling alive. Like, it lifted the room, it lifted our spirits. And just to see Jeff and Stoney and Mike and Eddie and Dave, and, and they're, they're just so freaking happy, you know? And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic, you know? And like, like I tell you, we were just like, dang, you know, head banging, getting into it. Like we were grooving on music you'd never heard of, be never heard before. I mean, that, and, and so literally, and, and like afterwards, everyone's just, smiling and hugging and it was this big kind of like love fest afterwards and and that's why i met eddie and you know um and we were just so happy and they were just they were just smiling ear to ear like oh my God. And, we, and people liked it you know and we're like hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was it was a moment i mean it, it still floors me that that would be like you driving down the street and going to your local your local uh, music venue uh, you know, like drive down the street, see Thunder Pussy or something, and you're like, oh my God, that's Pearl Jam, or Mother, you know, or, or you know, oh, oh, here's Nirvana, you know, that was just my local music, <laughs> which is still mind blowing today to me, just so you know. <laughs> There's nothing like it. I don't blame you. It is to me too, even on the other side of it, uh, of the of the uh, country. Um, and then you know, like when I think back to it too, or just think of it in general, they must have been so different. Like I work a lot of photographers it's three songs it's the barricade was it like that was there a barricade in its first three songs and then you're back into the general admission or was it free range for the whole night oh man no this this <laughs> this place is a dive bar just so you know i mean we love it like it, okay. it's in our whatever. oh no the stage probably doesn't even come up to your waist okay just so you know okay. so that's the other thing like when you're standing like um uh so it's it, it, you know it's not a very big room, but um, but the sound in there was fantastic. I will have to say that. And so the stage wasn't very high, which which lends itself to a lot of crowd surfing, <laughs> okay, cool, Locking and all of that. So it's fantastic. But um, yeah, so and there's no there's no buffer, and, and that's what I'm seeing. Like if if there would have been more people, I mean I I can't even think if I ever took a picture of a band, uh, a full band shot you know just because i could just walk up there and go right over here and get my wide angle and i mean and thank god i did i mean i i i actually love a whole band shot you know they're very hard to get but i got them you know i got every yeah. member of the band so it's, it's awesome yeah. how do you feel like that night or that experience ended up influencing what you did afterwards was it did it inspire you to say all right i got it I got to always be there for moments like this. I got to follow this band around. I want to get sound. Guard. Like, was there a, um, was that something that, the, was there something that night triggered for you as a, as an artist? Well, I was, you know, I had already done so many photos, you know, before that I was saying, you know, I, I, I did Alice in Chains, you know, for Rolling Stone, new faces. I did their first promo pictures. And uh, so I was already, I was already in like, you know, fangirl with a camera, music lover, you know, so um, but what's so funny is like, they, they didn't get signed right away. You know what I mean? So they, they sang those songs and we went to the, the thing and then, and then they had to shop around the deal and they had to wait, they had to get out of their, um, they had to unwind their polygram deal. So there was a little bit of a delay from the first time they played until them, a record, you know, recording the album, finishing the album. I mean, I, I don't know the whole story there, but, um, but you didn't see them again. I mean, they played like three other, two other shows. Um, and I, I don't think I went to either of those. Just, I don't know why. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask, but, uh, I, <laughs> but um, yeah. And then look at, I found this. Oh, so then I went to the, I went to the record release party. And so I found this flyer wow. and, and on the back, there's like Jeff Ament writes this stuff. And because I love how Jeff Ament writes. He, I mean, and this is his signature stuff where he writes like that. And so it says, Pearl Jam, to think this all started seven years ago, the Stone Faction, and then it says meets the Jeff Faction, Green River, Mother Love Bone, Pearl Jam, Eddie, Dave, Mike, Pearl Jam, 
the coming together of 10, hands, eyes, and ears. And then it says the journey begins. Uh, oh, like your, like your favorite plant, just add water, watch Pearl Jam grow. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, that it's is something. just fit to a T, right? <laughs> I mean, isn't, isn't that the cutest thing? And so I went to, like I was saying, I went to that record release party and, uh, and that was fun, you know, and then they all signed my, you know, they signed the, the 10 cover, you know, I got that from all the band and then, and then I got my picture taken with Eddie and then Eddie, I said, Hey, how'd you come up with the, oh, I was with my friend who's a writer. And so he's like, how did, how did you come up with the name Pearl Jam? And Eddie says, Oh, it, my, my, it's my grandma, grandma Pearl. And she made the best of Pearl and she makes the best jam in the world and I was like hmm. <laughs> that is what he said I wasn't sure I believed him but he was ridiculous and I, I and I totally I totally liked him from the minute I met him you know I mean and, and like I said I mean and and like you're saying like for for Mike McCready and Stoney and 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 Jeff and Dave and Eddie I mean the talent in each of those people and, and you know the oh my gosh and, and it hasn't stopped I mean yeah 30 PJ 30 years amazing prove us wrong Keep yeah and oh, firing on all cylinders more more relevant and important than ever uh, so <laughs> I, what what is it what is it like for you now like when you see these guys or if you if you photo if you photograph a show um, of them playing at Safeco or you know anywhere what does it feel like now you know just being a part of uh, their scene and just seeing it evolve and impact so many people's lives, is it, does it feel different? Is it must feel pretty amazing. Oh, it does. And, you know, I guess for, for me or us or whoever I'm, you know, our, our group, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, like I, I did shoot Pearl Jam, you know, at the Safeco at the home shows. And, you know, it's like Mike McCready, you know, he's like, Karen, hey, and then he comes over and he starts rocking. <laughs> And it, it's so fun because we remember where we started and, and, and that's very important. And that they, it's like, um, you know, like I'll go to something and there, there'll be Chris Novostelic. And now granted he's six, seven, he's above the crowd. And he's like, Karen, he can see me. And, and like, we'll always remember, like, we're like, I call us our uh, Seattle music family, you know, like we're, yeah. and it's like, so, so it's so, uh, to me, it's just, it's, it, it kind of keeps you humble, you know what I mean? So it's hard for me to uh, make an assessment, kind of like, whoa, what did you think? Because because I always just remember them exactly, you know, Jerry Cantrell slept on my couch, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I went to Mike's birthday parties, you know what I mean? I love yeah. him. Like, you know, we're, we're friends. So, you know, sometimes then you get, you know, you kind of get personal with your business or business with your personal, but um, but it's so fun. And, and And like I said, we're all, we're all just happy and you know especially since we've lost several of our you know friends over the years i mean we hug a little we hug a little tighter you know i mean especially yeah. after the thing um so we love a little deeper and, and that and that really that is good that is a good change you know and then and then we just value it i mean it's like make new friends and keep the old one or from the other gold you know it's like we got these golden friends we got these silver friends we, you know you got you know, millions of you out there you know and, and, we, and we love you all i mean it's so fun that's that's so cool. It's amazing to hear to hear the stories and, and how much it's valued, and that you guys can can so so uh, laugh and hug about it today. And, and Chris Cornell, um, he obviously he individually was largely responsible for the launch of Artist Waves and so much of what I've oh, done as wow. a writer and artist. And oh. and uh, that's another yeah, that's another. Um, but I, I mean, I think about that guy and, and every single day and, and what he what he did and what he means still. Um, so I, I, uh, I smile inside when, whenever anyone brings him up and shares. Anyone brings him up and shares stories like he did. And it's cool to think that you guys still get together and, and feel that bond and have that love. Um, and, and that, that feeling of being so proud about your city and, and your local community. Even when I see people like Aaron Jones, it makes me feel that too. I just did all of his photos. Those I saw that. I love just, that guy's music. My answer to your question, what are you doing now? I was like, well, Aaron, he just hit a <laughs> on Billboard today. And, and he's just a rocker, man. I love him. He is so good. Yeah. He oh, no. is, 
I love that guy's music and I got introduced to it in the weirdest way. It was through, it was actually through Kenny Main on ESPN. Oh my but, God. Oh, like, I saw that broadcast. He's like, AJ in the way. <laughs> yeah, he kept referencing AJ in the way when they were going by that. And I listened to it and I was like, whoa. <laughs> This is no joke. Yeah. He's joke. Yeah. He's oh, that's awesome. Well, you, yeah. So you you are you got your pulse on the Seattle music scene still, dude. Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Oh, I, um, yeah. It's a, it's a vital part of of my um, my artistic makeup. Let's I'll put it that way. Um, are there any other photos or anything you had mentioned that you wanted to show or, or talk about? I wanted to certainly give you that. Well, Time to do that if there was. I was going to show my, this is one of my favorite, uh, Kurt Cobain's. Oh, wow. That is a signature Cobain move, pose, I, whatever. Never taken a photo like it or you know, since. Like, I, I don't normally take those kind of photos, but it's called a, Alone in the Fame. And it's just like the greatness and the loneliness of Kurt Cobain, man. Wow. That, that, is, that is beautifully, <laughs> like, nailing his persona. Oh my gosh, I loved him. Yeah, and then here, and then this, of course, is my like claim to fame here with the sunglasses. Right. And he's smirking at me, and and he says, uh, he says, uh, I go, oh, like like I'm taking this picture, okay? And and he never, you know, he's always like, Kurt Cobain, <laughs> and I'm like, Kurt, can you smile? And he goes, you always say that. I go, yeah, and you always like my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and he smiled at me because. It wasn't even a smile. He just knew I got him. So it was yeah. very, like, like he was saying, it was just a moment. It was like our, our personality. And, and that's what I hope people see when they, when they look at my photos is that, uh, is that I had a relationship and I had, and we had a rapport and we had, you know, we knew each other. And that's why, and that's why they trust me with their photos as, as well. I mean, there's, you know, I mean, a lot of bands wouldn't even let anybody take their photo. I mean, it was crazy. And so, um, so that's the reason why I got a lot of other photos too, because they're like, go to Karen, she's so fun and nice, and you know, and I'll make them feel comfortable, even in an uncomfortable situation, you know, and just because I knew them and their personalities, I, you know, it's like Matt Cameron. Hi, I'm Matt. Okay, get the stools away from Matt Cameron. No more sure. <laughs> I love Matt. But you know, it's fun. You know, it, 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 you know, we were having the time of our lives. I mean, hands down. And people are like, oh, was it depressing? It's like, are you kidding? Like, <laughs> like, your question, like, what did you feel like after you left? You felt totally elevated. You, you felt 10 times better. Like, whatever problem, I mean, you just heard alive and black and once. And, and you're like, wow, like, that set me free. Like, the music set the sick ones free, you know? And so it's like, oh my gosh, no, we, yeah, there was depression everywhere, even today. But we go bang our heads, we you know rock out, we see our friends, we hug everybody. It's this giant thing, and you go home just oh, I'm gonna sleep so good. <laughs> <laughs> well put, well put, right on. That's so cool. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll ask one or two more things. If anyone else wants to fire in a question, maybe we have time. Oh yeah, I saw uh, someone sure. ask a question, something about Eddie, and um, it was like, yeah. did you? What do you say? Oh, it was some question about, oh, you can you see him? You can do it. I yeah, think. I can see him. I can't see anything that already scrolled through. But if anyone has a question, you want to fire one into the comment. Uh, if we have time and, and Karen has time, we're happy to uh, just to, to throw a few out there. Um, I guess one of the last things I will say is, well, when you think back, like when we're going through the photos and looking at images from 30 years ago tonight, I guess coming full circle, what would you say it means to you as as the photographer who captured the moments, right? So like, I'm all about, an artist way is all about moments. Like there are stories, there are articles, there are songs, and then there are images. And this isn't to bash anybody's work by any means, but then there are those that capture moments that resonate deeply. And that's something that has always taken, um, that always grabbed me about your work is how, how incredibly you were, seem to be able to capture the moment. Um, whether it was staged or not staged. So um, I'm curious now, what, when you look at those photos from that night, what does it mean to you? Like what, what are the thoughts and the emotions that you think of when you, when you see the off-ramp shots from 30 years ago? Well, you know, yeah, I mean, thank God I took pictures because I wouldn't remember half this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. It is, you know. I love it. 
you know, and so it, it I don't know. I mean, now I'm 10,000 hours, you know what I'm saying? So like, I, I mean, I, it's like, I'm just sitting there waiting, you know, I am pretty much waiting for the moment. Like I know the moment's coming, you know, and that's another reason. I mean, that's another thing is when you go shoot a band, you haven't heard the songs. Like I cannot do that. Like every album, I go shoot an album cover. You got to get me the songs, you know, you go to, go, I got to hear the songs. Cause every, I want to interpret the songs artistically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These people are asking questions. What are they? Uh, we had one, what was your favorite band to shoot? And then we had, uh, one that says, do you like walking papers? I love walking papers, by the way. I do love walking papers. Uh, and 10 miles wide. Walking papers. And 10 miles wide. Yes. Uh, what was life the artist when you found out you shoot the pictures of the person? <laughs> How it changed my life. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I love these questions. You know, it, it was, a, you know, I, I don't, it's changing my life now, <laughs> I guess, you know, cause you just said Pearl Jam just posted me. So I didn't, I didn't do anything with the photos literally for 20 years. <laughs> and I didn't even do anything with them up until three years ago, you know? And that's when I, uh, you know, had my gallery show called the flannel years, you know? And then I toured that show, but um, yeah. So now it's changed my life because everyone knows that I've got the only photos and, and I love Pearl Jam because they honor me. And then, um, and I honored them, you know, um, by, by calling them first and saying, oh my gosh, you guys want these? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I guess we'd have time for one more if anyone has one. Otherwise, I would just say I have loved this conversation so much. Thank you for being so responsive and collaborating with me and Artist Waves. This is what we're all about. Um, and it's, uh, it's so cool to be able to chat with someone like you on a day like today. And get some insight as to because it was such a special you know occasion obviously the rest of this history but um, what's your favorite photo of Pearl Jam that you've seen yeah that's a good one keeps asking I don't know I'm pretty I'm pretty into the Mike McCready and then and then I love well I did shoot drop in the park and then I do this is this one this one because I just released this like I don't know six months ago but this is just moving me you know just like if you just look at Eddie there you know oh and then um, I got some other ones I'm going to bring out because we haven't seen we haven't seen all my Pearl Jam pictures. <laughs> all right. I'm a little busy, but I'll you know I'm going to bring them out for you guys. So yeah, can't wait. Four to come, yeah. and Eddie looks different. And oh my gosh, he's like a photographer's dream because one time he has a hat on, so then I get those pictures, and then he takes his hat off, he has his hair over to one side, so I get those pictures. Then he has his. You know, then, he, then he's wearing his shirt. Then he takes his shirt off and he's white and he's just wearing a white shirt. I was like, dude, I got like five sets of you. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie Vedder. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. If you wouldn't know, you would think it was five different days, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but there's, a, there's an online thing today, Pearl Jam in Italy. Yeah, Pearl I Jam love that. It's going to play the whole video. And so you can match the clothing. And so the thing is, is that they're on the internet before I, before I came out and said that I had these photos, there's this other, there are these two photos and they're calling that Pearl Jam's first concert and it's not, but I don't blame them because they wanted to have, you know, they, they want this to go somewhere. It's, it's, it is a Mookie Blaylock shot, but it's not their first. And so that's what's so great. I don't know. These guys got this video. I mean, it's rough, but it, but it's good. <laughs> yeah. I, it amazes me uh, to, to see that and to how, how it happened too. But, um, so awesome. So somebody said, somebody said something about, I missed it. I'm sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, see, I'm so new at this. I should have read it for you. Uh, yeah. No worries. I think, I think we covered most of it. And if, uh, if I missed your question that you just shot in, feel free to do it again. Yeah. Um, so it's where else awesome. people, oh, oh, you know what it was? They asked where they could buy your prints. Oh yeah, so uh, you can just go to my website, KarenMasonBlair.com, and I just launched my online store called Grunge Mart, and cool. and then I put up a special Pearl Jam collection for you guys. So then you can just click on Pearl Jam, and all I think I have, I think I have seven, maybe eight photos. Um, I got a drop in the park, and then I got some Mother Love Bone, and um, and then pictures from their first show. And I did post one on there that that no one's really ever seen before. So that, that pretty much today. And so, yeah, but, but stay tuned because I got more coming <laughs> for you yes. guys. And your books and, are still, your books are still available on there too. Uh, yeah, and I, I book on Amazon.
Amazon so we can get the book on Amazon. But if you just buy it from me, that's just as good. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And any other projects or other than, you know, obviously you said you're, you're shooting with Aaron, anything else uh, locally that that's coming up? Well, I'm just like, you know, I've just been working, uh, you know, I'm getting this online thing because, you know, I can't do my shows as often. So yeah. I had to go online. You know, I just, um, I got a picture of Radiohead in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last year. So that was cool. And I mean, like, I, I've got, I got everybody. Like, I, I you know, I got um, Blind Melon. I haven't gotten any of those pictures out. You know, I mean, believe me, I should just, you know, thank goodness things are slowing down so I can get caught up. But I could just um, start scanning some more pictures. <laughs> all right. What I'm doing because I got I got Elliot Smith. I mean, I got all this stuff that no one's ever seen. So stay that tuned. Good. A lot yeah. of fun, exciting stuff ahead. So happy to hear it. Excited to hear it. And thank you so much. I'll, I'll let you go. This was a blast. I really appreciate your all your insight and talking to us about all these amazing stories. And uh, you know, as I said, we're we're lucky to have your art. Hey, Paul. Hey. <laughs> <Very nice laughs> <work> Paul. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for having me. And thanks for all you do and that you support the artist community. And, and we love you and we need you. And you keep on keeping on. <laughs> right on. Well, it was so great to talk to you. And I uh, look forward to speaking again. And thank you again. OK, man. All right. Bye. Take care. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right, how cool was that? Karen Mason Blair, uh, incredible photographer out of Seattle that was there. She was there that night, 30 years ago, off ramp, Mookie Blaylock, Pearl Jam's first show. And those were some very moving uh, and awesome stories. So I'm so happy we were able to put this together and, and Karen was uh, so awesome to talk to you and, and organizing this. Please go to her website, karenmasonblair.com. Um, I think you can link directly to the Grunge Mart um, online store that she spoke to. I was playing around with it earlier today and a lot of that stuff is there. And she has some of the most iconic shots of uh, really of Pearl Jam and of that night and of all the, the Seattle, incredible music out of Seattle. And obviously she's still doing it with Aaron Jones. So uh, much love to Karen Mason Blair, much love to Mookie Blaylock 30 years ago tonight at the, at the off ramp. And thank you so much for tuning in to Artist Waves Live. My name is Jeff Gora. And before I sign off, I just want to say uh, my boy Jake's birthday, my boy Maddie's birthday, my boy Parker's birthday. I love you, boys. This is, uh, this is for you. We're going we're gonna to do this thing. I love you guys. Happy birthday, and thank you all. Talk to you all soon. We've got more coming next week, and uh, I, will, I will be posting and, and sharing some, some exciting happenings at our Waves coming up. So cheers. Thank you. Peace.